So, he hello. Now I have here a micro because I need to type. Okay, I hope, I hope you can hear me well. So, my name is Roland Huss. I'm working for Red Hat as a software engineer. I'm the work group, one of the working group leaders of the client, and uh, until the end of the month, I'm still a uh, TOC member. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Today, we are talking about Knative and Camelets. And uh, yeah, so first let's start with this classic picture. I think we already have seen it quite a lot today. This is how you can set up an eventing topology with uh, Knative. You have a broker in the middle, and then on the left-hand side, you have something which kind of creates cloud events, or more like an adapter who transforms external events into cloud events, pushes it to the broker, and the broker then calls out to so-called so sinks. And in this uh, talk, we are going to talk about the left-hand side, so how we can create easily many sources. With, with the technology which is called Camelets, we will see that in a second. And then we also talk about sinks, because Camelets also provide out-of-the-box sinks that you can directly use. But first of all, have a look at the existing uh, sources that we have. So we have four sources that come out of the box with, with every Canadian installation. We have the ping source and the API server source, which are kind of, yeah, it's a scheduling source and want some source to connect to the API server of Kubernetes. And then we have some more like general purpose sources like uh, the container source and also a sync binding. And you can kind of connect your deployment directly with, uh, with Canadian eventing. Then we have also some more like maintained sources uh, under the umbrella of Knative, which uh, is, is a handful like uh, Cochito source or CouchDB so source like that. You find these also on the Knative repositories. And then of course there are also live vendors like Twitter Mesh that, that offers uh, sources out of the box and uh, here for some cloud connections and we have already seen in the other talks before that other, other sources as well. But I would say that we have roughly maybe 50 to 60 sources out there. And uh, there's one, so what the problem with sources actually, or what, what, uh, try, what I'm trying to, to um, tell you today. So first of all, we know sources are the entry point for cloud events. They are not difficult to implement, so it's quite easy. You have a controller, then you have custom resource definition, maybe you have a single controller for multiple custom resource definitions, but still you have to, to, to create the CRDs. And, and you can use some general purpose uh, sources like the container source or the sync binding, but then you have lose some advantages like the typed approach that, that you get with a CRD, or you, but you still have to create a container image for that, of course. Then the other problem actually is that discovery is kind of difficult. You have, you have the event registry, but to be honest, I'm not sure how many people are really using it. So event registry means that you can or a source can register an event type and so that a user can detect that event type and find the source. But a, more, a bigger problem actually is uh, that in restricted environments, you are not really, um, it's not easy to deal with cluster-wide resources for a regular user. So it's not easy to create, install CRDs on your own. So if you want to install an own source with a CRD, you have a problem typically. But even, even more, you often have issues even to read CRDs. So there are lockdown environments OpenShift is being one of them, uh, that where you can't really, as a regular user, you can't even list cluster-wide resources, so you can't even find out what resources are available. That's, that's an, uh, it's an issue. And yeah, the question is actually, are there alternatives, how you can, how can we avoid these issues? And actually, let's have a look to, to Camel and how we can, can we get to many more, more sources. So actually, this is a picture of of things which I would like to have in as Canadian eventing sources so that I easily as a user can directly connect to all of these systems. And so let's have a look to Camel. So some words. So Camel, you probably have heard about Camel. It's, uh, it's based, so it's an implementation of that left-hand book, uh, left-hand side book with enterprise integration patterns. Very famous book, very great stuff in there. They describe all, all kinds of patterns that you use, use uh, if you have an integration scenario. And Camel is more or less implementation of these patterns in code. So it's, it comes as a library. It, uh, actually, it's uh, already older than 10 years. It's, it's still one of the most active Apache open source projects. Uh, it's Java-based, so typically you use it as a library. You have a certain DSL where you can describe your integration route. And then you have to compile it into some runtime. Typically, it's Spring Boot or it's Quarkus. And then this runtime needs to be operated either directly on, on, your, on your server or via a orchestration platform like with Kubernetes. And the benefit here is, of course, that over those 10 years, they have really, the community have created more than 340 components. These are components are really kind of connectors to external systems. So they are for, for incoming and for outgoing uh, connections. 
And you see we have also a big prominent fan here over there. This was quite for some fun at, at Twitter at some time. Okay, so this was Apache Camel as it started. But then in 2018, the Camel community also decided to, be, to modernize their stack and they invented a new sub-project which is called Camel K, K for Kubernetes. And this actually means it, uh, it uses a CRD which is uh, integration. It's called integration. You put in your, your Camel DSL as a part of the spec of the of this of this integration custom resource and then you just deploy it and everything else so creating the runtime creating the image pushing it to some registry executing it and so on is all taken care of by Camel K itself so it's really kind of gives you a much easier approach to to use Camel and you don't even have to be a Java developer for example and then the next step in the evolution is our Camelets and this is what I'm going to talk about today these are really kind of predefined route snippets. It's really something like, you will see it in a second in the next slide, uh, which you package into a CRD, which is called Camelot. So this is kind of a type, like a high level custom resource definition. So you can deploy many of the Camelots, and then you can create an instance of this Camelot with a Camelot binding um, easily. And so, but these are all are really user manageable resources. So there's no, you don't have to be cluster administrator for that. And actually, of course, ideally, you would have all these 340 components available as Camelets. At the moment, there are around 70 plus Camelets that you can directly use, but this uh, list is constantly growing uh, in quite some uh, yeah, amount. So actually, let's have a quick look how this looks like from the code. So this is a typical example of, of Camel. By the way, who of you does already know about Apache Camel? One, two, yeah, okay, I would say maybe half of the audience. That's great. Uh, so then you probably recognize this kind of definition. So this is uh, written in the Java DSL, so it's a builder pattern. So you put this into a class and then you can create a route. In this case, you have uh, an uh, incoming point, which is a Twitter search component. So behind this, this uh, schema, URL schema, there is, is uh, registered a, a handler and this, this would do the, actually the connection. And then you have parameters that you add as, as query parameters here. And finally, you can do all the pattern stuff here uh, as add-on. You can transform them, you can enrich them, you can split them, you can send them out to something else, and here we're sending out directly to an eventing broker. So super simple, but still you have to do a lot of boilerplate here. In KMK this would look like that. So actually this would be an integration uh, custom resource, and I only have shown here really only a fragment of the specification. So you have the configuration here, uh, with the concrete values, and then you have the route, which is actually more or less the same what we have seen in the slide before. And now, finally, we have Camel K, and Camel K just split up the integration in a template part and in an instantiation part. So actually, the template part is on the left-hand side. This is actually the real Camelet. And you see that in the, on the template uh, specification, you have placeholders, like access token, keywords. These are just parameters that you can define. And uh, so there's a Camelot writer who, who knows Camel very well and uh, just creates this kind of uh, objects, put it under the cluster, and then another user can just instantiate uh, the Camelot by providing a Camelot binding and providing the missing parameters. And then you get, in the background, an integration object, or the, the one from the slide before, and then the Camelot operator will create the runtime. Okay, um, so this is about the slides. Now let's go to the demo. I have, uh, that's good, I have 15 minutes, so we will try something from scratch. Hopefully it will work. So we start with a, uh, with a Twitter incoming Twitter search. So this is a Camelot component that searches for on Twitter for a certain keyword. In that case, it's uh, slash keyduck. It will create then a cloud event, sends it over to the Canadian broker. And um, the Canadian broker then moves it on to a Canadian function. We will also see how, uh, we will also create the function by, uh, from scratch. The function itself communicates with the Google API, a Google Cloud Translation API, to translate the tweet into a random language. Then we create another cloud event, send it back to the broker, and finally it lands in a so-called Slack sync. So this is the, the opposite of a source, where we send out this translated tweet onto a channel on the Canadian Slack, okay? So let's get started, I have not much, uh, we have not much time, and yeah, they always want me to make demos with public services, so let's, <laughs> please be nice to me. Um, okay, so we have here um, a, a Minikube cluster, empty, as you see on the top, some watches on certain resources, port, uh, Canadian services, and the cabinet bindings. 
And the first thing what we have to do is, of course, we have to create a broker. Uh, sorry. I have to take off my glasses. OK, so th 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 that was easy. And now let's start with the Twitter search component. For that, we uh, can just, uh, before I do that, I'm just uh, showing you the, all the camelets that are listed here on the cluster. We have also for OKN a, a plugin for camelets. You can do everything what I'm doing here also with YAML files, of course. But here we're just listing all the camelets that are available. It's over 70, I say. They are really uh, for all kind of uh, external systems. And one of my favorite one, but we don't see them much, you could, but you can try it out. Chuck Norris source, which gives you some random Chuck Norris quote. Very nice, very useful. But we are looking for this Twitter search here. So this is our source that we are going to instantiate now. So let me do that. So you can also use source camelet. And for that, we need to create a binding. So what you see here now, we create a binding, which we call Twitter search source. We connect it to the default broker. We set some properties here. So these are key value pairs that we can use. So keywords, we are looking for, for, for this KDAC. And then we are adding the access tokens for our Twitter API access. So they are stored in some files. So here and below the directory. So let's create that. You will see here that the thing. So let's maybe let's have a quick look into into the, what happened behind the scenes. So what I'm having here is a lock tail on the Camel K operator. It detects this Camelot binding, creates the integration object, and then runs a compilation for the Java code behind the scenes. So and then creates an image that gets deployed directly to our uh, system. So this might take a little bit. Hopefully, I've already pre-warmed all caches. So normally, if you start the first time, it's a little bit slower. But you see already, oh, sorry. You see already here that, uh, that it's running. And yeah, that's it. So now, now we have a connection to Twitter and get already the tweets into our broker. And um, to, to see that this really works, let's create a simple e-display service. So the standards, we have already seen the service, which is uh, a service that just logs out cloud events to the, to the console. And then I have, of course, to create a trigger, create event display like that. And then we make a thing on e-display as well. Sorry. OK. So you might want to try that as, as well. But let me hand over to my browser. So I feel my, my Twitter client. Let me see. Uh, hello, knativecon. Con. And then don't forget the tag. We tweet that and then head over to our um, console. And then this might take a little bit because uh, actually this is a polling approach. So it's with a search that polls every, I, I don't know the default volume, but every 10 to 15 th seconds. You see now, OK, our uh, e-display is already stopping. So we were a little bit too slow. So I'm hoping that. We will come up uh, here you see. So now it's uh, creating something, and we get our cloud event. So you see that the Twitter search just creates a very verbose cloud event with all the metadata that, that you can get back from, from, from Twitter. And here we have our uh, te test text that we have here. OK, so works. Uh, next step is now the Slack sync. So we have the Twitter source now. Now let's go to the Slack sync. Unfortunately, uh, KN doesn't have yet support for Camelot syncs, but uh, so I can show you actually the YAML file here for such a Camelot. And uh, let me, so this is the Slack sync here. It's also quite sim simple. So you have, give it a name. You have uh, two, two legs here. So the source is actually what you want to connect to. In our case, we want the source as the broker because we receive the event from the broker. And we, we filter also on, on tweets, tweet translated types. And the other part is a sync, which is uh, just a sync, to, uh, also, uh, sorry, a Camelot Slack sync. And we configure it with the configuration. I have not shown the URL here fully. So this is the also complete authentication against the Slack channel. And, and yes, that's it. That's all what you need. So let's try that as well. So I make here an apply minus F sync demo. So this just includes the proper credentials. And you will see then. 
if I make this a little bit larger, the sorry, the binding as well. Oh, it, it already comes up here. You see the Slack thing. So this is a, actually the sync itself is implemented as a Knative service because it actually can also go down. It's stateless, and uh, so we have now a Slack service here. And of course, we can try that out as well. So let's uh, use our event plugin for that. KN, we have also already seen that in action here. We want to send it to the broker. We have, of course, set a type to be translated, and we add some random body here. And uh, if I'm doing that one second, going like here. I have my, my Slack here. So this is the channel I'm going to post to. This is on, on Knative. And uh, what this plugin actually does, it creates a container within the cluster that sends directly the cloud event to the broker. Because the broker, of course, is not exposed to, to the outside. And so you can directly now send into the Slack channel. OK, now proven Slack sync is already working. Now let's do our final uh, thing. This is actually creating the, the function. I, there's still some time for that. So what we are doing here now is, of course, we create a function. So actually, we are using Node as our runtime. We want to, the Cloud Events template, which already provides us a nice signature for Cloud Events. And we call that thing tra uh, Translate Tweet. And as I mentioned, we want to talk with the Google Translation API. For that, we, of course, need to authenticate ourselves. And the Google Cloud API typically works that you expose certain environment variables, which points to a authentication file. For that, we first have to create a, a secret. Sorry. Group control create secret. I have it here. This is taken from that file. So here's my Google service account included. And I create a secret which, a secret which is called Google SA. And this we will expose to the function within an environment variable. OK, th this is created. Now let's uh, enter our Google Translate tweet. In order to talk to the Google Cloud API, uh, translation API, we need to install a dependency which includes the, the, the Google Cloud uh, API into our function itself. So we use npm for that, just as a regular node, node coder. Hopefully, it should be done easily. Again, I will get probably here outed error. I won't fix, uh, fix it yet. <laughs> OK, and now, as I mentioned, we need to set, configure our function. And luckily, there's also a feature which is called func config. And we would say we want to create a volume. We want to add a volume, and we want to add it from a secret. So actually, this will add something to your function that you mount from a secret. We take the Google SA, which I just have created in my namespace. And then I have to, to point to the, sorry, to the directory I want to mount it to. And I'm using opt slash GCE in that example. And finally, we need to add some environment variables at so we add it here like that. And we use the, I have to look this up, I don't. Google application credentials. So this is the variable which is picked up by the dependency for Google Cloud Translate. And we say we want here uh, our mounted directory plus the, the credentials here. So that one, OK, looks good. And finally, we need a, a final variable we add here. Uh, it like that here, and we use Google Project ID. Uh, sorry, and it's Knative con demo. Okay. Okay. Now we have set up, set up our environment, and now we can start coding. So how do we that? So I start my. I start my. Hope that will work. Have it here. Okay, this is a, a, the the code that has been created for me by Kane Fun Create. We remove some boilerplate which we do not need. I hope I can do that. Uh, okay, we don't no, need the sample code even. Okay, now let's get started. So first of all, I have to to import my dependency to Google Cloud Translate. And then, as I mentioned, we wanted to translate into kind of a random language. So actually, I have here an array with 
different languages. They're all from my fellow team members here. And uh, okay, that's here. And now we, we uh, extract the tweet data from the event. The event that is coming in is based on this schema from the Twitter tweet. So we pick up this uh, tweet. We create this, uh, sorry, this random number here. This is just, yeah, picking uh, some random number from, from this uh, array. And then we uh, do the translation. So we have here a translate object. This is all, all given by the Google Cloud Translation API. And then we call translate. We could also call detect or another uh, function that is exposed by this API. Then we enter the text in here. And then we enter the language code that we want to translate to. So this is the one which is picked up randomly. Then we have this await here, which means that the API is asynchronous from, for, for, for Google. So actually, we need to make our function here async as well. OK, and then uh, now we have the text. Now let's, let's create the, the actual text that we want to, to post. I have to make it a little bit nicer here. So here you see I'm using the original tweet text, and then I add the translation like here, and I put a nice flag in front of this. So this is also picked up from the initial array. And finally, we have to return that here, uh, which means I have to set the type tweet translated. And then I have here tweet, tweet translator for, for the source. OK, this is, the t this is the code that you need. So you see this is really kind of this glue code that you typically also see for Lambda functions and uh, where you really connect two different services together and add some extra functionality, like, like here, like translating. Of course, you could do any call any out to any other service. OK, let's go back here. And of course, we want first to try it out here locally. So it's not always, it's always if you want to develop um, with the, with the, against the cloud, it's all often easier to really to, to test and try it locally. For that, I just have to to uh, source the environment variables locally here as well. So I have, I've set that in this in shell file. And then I can uh, use npm start. I'm running this in the background. So here it's running now locally, my function. And then I can just, uh, again, leverage my event plugin. In this case, I'm sending directly to a URL. And the URL is here. It's localhost 8080. So I'm jumping to the top, so it's easier to see. And I'm just uh, adding some fake information, all the data that I needed in my function. So you don't have to provide a full-blown tweet, uh, tweet cloud event, but actually only that one. And if I send that in, in there, uh, I have something wrong. So let me let me just check here. And I've uh, up. So, so some okay. So this it's called that we we tested. So let's check it here. It's a uh, no such file. Oops, Google. Uh, but, 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 haven't I said the, ah, maybe it uh, uh, just has been picked up by, by Echo, Google application credentials. Looks good, so I'm not sure why it doesn't work. Okay. But nevertheless, okay, I can check it later. But as you see, it already points to the path which is inside the builder image. So let's uh, keep finger crossed and deploy it as a function at the moment. And for that, I'm uh, no, uh, just sure whether it really works. Sand. Oh, really strange. OK, let, let me try to deploy it. So actually, you have already seen how you can deploy such a function. Let's go to k and func deploy. So this will build the function as, uh, locally via my local Docker daemon, sends it to Docker.io, and then uh, will deploy the image as a, as a service, Canadian service. And yeah, this might take a little bit. Mm. 
Okay, now it has been built and now it's pushed to the registry and before then the Canadian service is created. You will see this at, at the top as well. You see also that the Twitter source is really, this is a true deployment because it has to pull regularly so you cannot really have it scaled down to zero. There, in the future there are plans to combine CADA for certain sources as well with CAMLS so that you, for example, for the Kafka source, uh, Kafka CAMLS, you also can spin down that deployment directly. So we see now that our the translate tweet is running. Luckily, it's, it's, it's ready here, like that. And the final step, what, which, which is missing, is of course we need to create a trigger still. Um, tri trigger tweet translate. So actually, we have to filter on type or Apache Camel event. So this is the standard type that Camelets are exposing. You can override this, but for, this is good enough for us now. And then we are po po pointing it to the our uh, our function. So actually we connect now the Twitter source with our function, actually, like that. And yeah, and now this kind of uh, is it. Now let's check whether this really works as expected. So sorry, I have to go to that one. And I have to go to, to Slack here. And let's see if I have here some text here. And now let's tweet that. Oops, I already tweeted that <laughs> in the first code ever. So, but for sure not the last. <laughs> so, now let's wait and see what's happened. So I can go back here. And see now that uh, the containers created for the for the sync, uh, Slack sync, and then we should see the translated text here immediately. Now in now in Polish by by chance. So this kind of concludes the demo. Um, let me jump back. So sorry that the local experience was not working as expected. Um, yeah, but I hope I could show you that it's really super easy that you can create fancy integrations with tons of sources, combining with functions and. Uh, yeah, so this is really the kind of, at least from the final setup Lambda experience that I could think that for the future we will see more and more like that. Okay, um, last slide, a quick outlook. So actually, um, as I mentioned, we are working on a sync Camelot plugin. There will be also a, a feature that you get typed options on the command line so that you get auto completion directly for the properties that you can choose from. At the moment, you see you have some general purpose properties, key value pairs. But uh, since the schema is also exposed by the Camelot, you can easily create dynamically CLI options that, uh, that honor this, uh, the schema. And uh, also support for secret and conflicts maps directly in our in the Camelot. At the moment, they are just literally included, the, the secrets, but Camelot themselves already support secrets and conflict maps, but not the client itself yet. And of course, we want to have more and more and more Camelots and six and sources, so, but this creating such a Camelot is a super easy process. You just need to do that. And finally, as I already mentioned, there will be at some point in time some integration with Cada where you can also scale down the Camelot sources. Uh, of course, only for those sources that for which a cater scaler is available. Okay, that's it, and uh, thank you very much. I think we have time for one question, if anyone has any questions. Thanks, Roland, that was uh, great. Um, the, the the challenge I, I think that we've seen is uh, the payload uh, schema of the events mm -hmm. and the event type uh, accepted by the syncs. So you know if you're a developer trying to do this, you know how would you go about you know finding the schema of like you know tweet the text right? That's yeah. not, you know and then tweet the translated to talk to Slack. You know it's not it's not easy right yeah so, so so there's not really a schema registry for that so actually because I, actually the the camelets work that they more or less hand over directly everything that they get from the upstream source for example like to the api and um, what i recommend is the workflow that i've just shown where you say you, you just really try examine that the tweet like from the source you just look at that and pick up what you are what you're interested in and then really create your function around that. So actually it's really at the moment still kind of a, 
exploring thing where you still have to try out and have to test it. So there's no documentation for that, but it's at the moment so it's super easy. So actually, to be honest, 80% of the demo was to find out how to authenticate against Twitter and Slack, <laughs> because this was uh, Twitter. Some you need a developer account for that, and you need to increase your developer level and whatnot. So, but but yeah. So but and the other thing was more the easier easier part. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the question. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you, Roland. Okay. Thank you. Give big applause Thank you. to Roland. <laughs> thanks.